Previously, we explored the mystery of dwarves beyond European folklore, uncovering links to Native American legends. This episode dives deeper, revealing forgotten histories hidden within indigenous stories across the Americas. The classical dwarves we picture, short, pointy nose with tools in tow, aren't exclusive to Europe. Mayan carvings from 600 to 900 AD depict similar beings, which mainstream archaeologists label as royal attendants who suffered from dwarfism. But Native American lore describes them differently, as entire dwarf tribes with their own societies. For instance, the Abenaki from Maine tell of Alambiguino seas, friendly dwarves, while the Algic tribes speak of Pakwatsinans, or little men of the woods. Other names pop up too. The Pukwudgies, shape-shifting forest folk, and the Wog, revered as wise ones or first people by the Yurok and Nadine. These stories span tribes from Canada to California, often associating dwarves with inner earth realms or mountain sanctuaries, reminiscent of Germanic and Norse mythology. Some dwarf tales are darker. The Shoshone of the Rockies recount the cannibalistic Nemeriger, who were cited in tales of an unearthed mummy from the San Pedro Mountains. Cherokee traditions mention Sundajwi, or sinful dwarves, who lure away children. Legends further describe dwarves like the Thunder Boys, adept healers who wear red and purple caps and are sensitive to sunlight. These dwarves live hidden, emerging at night to dance and play with native children. Anyway, this is part two of the series. If you feel like you've missed anything, check out the previous video. The link is in the description. I recommend watching it to get the full picture. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. In the Bahamas and Bermuda, the dwarves are called Yaho or Yiho by the natives, and said to be three to four feet tall, covered with long red or brown hair, and a splayed big toe. They are light-skinned with long beards. They often wear black velvet waistcoats. According to the oral history of the Cheyenne, their first attempt to enter the Rocky Mountains was stopped by an army of knee-high dwarves. Over time, they dwindled in number, without the Cheyenne's doing until they finally disappeared altogether. The Rama tribe of Latin America spoke of a white-skinned dwarf they called Kulmong. The Kogi tribe of the same region called their dwarves Noneome and said they lived in subterranean dwellings. The Trumai people of Brazil call their dwarves Ol. The Bari people call them Bakai. The Cadio tribe call them Animucuma. That's also their name for the underground world. According to the Sinema, the Oneidib or Oinani dwarves fell underground because they broke menstrual and other sexual rules. Dwarves in many tales of the natives are said to have no anuses, which tells us they are an entirely different people than modern-day dwarves. The Mahican or Mohican people say that the dwarves were fairies and that they preceded the human race. The Leni Lay people call them Nanapush, little people of the forest. If it were spelled Nana Bush, it would be much easier to see that all these Native American languages are really ancient German. It's strange to me that academics would write Push instead of Bush, which in ancient German denotes forest. I see this kind of obfuscation a lot. Most natives really discern between three types of dwarves. Those who well in caves, those of the water, and those in the bush or the woods. The Tacana, spelled Tacana, and representing the Earth's ancestors of ancient Bolivia, call their little ones at Seti Dia. This is translated as Sun Men. These are red-haired people, again without anuses. They dwell in a vast underworld realm of caverns. There is a belief that if humans behave badly, the Earth would rotate or tilt, and the Sun Men could rise to the surface while those living on Earth descend to the underground world. Because of this, some of the dwarf sun men aim to make humans behave badly, so that they can replace them in a new era on the surface of Earth. I'm familiar with old European stories that mirror this belief. For example, the German legend of the Sun King that is sleeping inside a mountain and will one day awaken and reclaim the surface of the Earth. The Karoti of ancient Paraguay called Dwarves Warwick, a tribe of evil child abductors. The Nivical and Kariri Tupi tribes call them Kutsakatas, dwarves with long white beards. Washipi are, according to the Toba people, one and a half to three feet in height. 
They are hairy, and their face has the likeness of monkeys. With their long fingernails, they like eating honey, cactus fruits, and pine nuts. They craft hammocks and small water jars, and many other items. Little people are no strangers to the Karuk, Seri, and Achawami tribes of Mexico. They are two and a half feet tall and human-like, often wearing leather headbands. They lived in the forest and were rumored to come from a sunken island in the Pacific. The oral tales of the ancients say they attempted to escape the flood, but those who survived were eventually eaten up by a big bird. The names used for these dwarves were Santos, Nadine, Panushans, and Kawas. The Inuit of Alaska call them Inuralic with pigeon toes and owl-like heads. The Chugash of ancient Alaska called them Inuralf Kikit, a physically strong, sea-oriented dwarves with pointed heads. Another name for them was Irene Ra, or Irene Rao, and Ingarajwit Sayat, two-foot-tall dwarves, also called spirit dwarves in more recent times. Inuk Galklinut are strong and courageous dwarves. Many of them wear fox skins, red pointed caps and pants or trousers made from seal skin. Consider this. All indigenous people share stories about the dwarves of old. I've only shown you a small sampling which anyone can look up and verify, but there's enough information to fill volumes. Dwarf skeletons have been found across the world. Dwarf dwellings have been found, even entire dwarf towns and villages. Dwarf weapons and flints have been dug up. All of these tales are routinely dismissed as myths in mainstream discourse. All of the skeletons and artifacts are dismissed as hoaxes without investigation. Or, if the authenticity of a find can't be denied, they say it's a rare genetic disease called dwarfism. It's safe to say that there is someone that doesn't want you to know this stuff. Why? It's probably not about dwarves directly, but what knowledge of their existence could lead to. Dwarves and giants are a small piece of a greater puzzle that will reveal our true history. Knowledge dissemination relies on you. Share this video far and wide.